Oh my god! Wow! Wow! This is one of the biggest caterpillars in the United States. But the moths that they turn into are even crazier. Wanna see them? Wow, of course, the impressive caterpillars also turn into really impressive moths. This is the regal moth, and they evolve from the hickory horned devil caterpillars, and I breed them in captivity. Do you want to see their life cycle? Of course. Let's go back in time. A long time ago. Hello guys. Wanna see the biggest caterpillar found in America? Of course you do, of course you do. Here I'm holding some eggs of the uh, regal moth, Citronia regalis. Let's go! Now this insect is also commonly known as the uh, hickory horned devil. But I prefer saying regal moth. Because horned devil, it refers to the caterpillars. And I think common names, it's better if they refer to the uh, to the actual adult stage. I mean, you call it a luna moth, not a luna caterpillar. So hickory horned devil, it refers to the larval stage. But the, uh, uh, the adult should be the regal moth. Although that doesn't really matter, does it? It's just a common name. I prefer scientific names anyway. Hickory horned devil, it does sound pretty badass to be honest. So uh, I, under I understand why people want to use it. I think these eggs are about to hatch very soon, so uh, I, I got them just in time. This is where it all started. These tiny round yellow things are the eggs of the hickory horned devil. These eggs can be incubated at room temperature in a petri dish. And in about two weeks time, small caterpillars will hatch from them. Yeah, here they are. Two weeks later the babies are born. And wow, there are so many of them. This is where our journey begins. From this point and beyond we have to raise them into giant moths. What's crazy is that even the tiny, tiny little babies seem to have spines already the minute that they are born. How can something be so cute yet so edgy? The next thing to do is to prepare the enclosure for these larvae. Personally, I just add leaves to a plastic container. Easy as pie, I prefer to add a layer of paper towels too sometimes. This can make it easy to clean. The caterpillars like sweet gum, hickory, cherry, walnut, willow and other plants. Wow, now that's crazy. Finally they are in star number 2 and they are looking more devilish already. They've grown a lot. Now the spines of this species clearly serve a defensive purpose. They can use them to shove enemies away or keep enemies at a distance, away from the surface level of their bodies. But important to note is that the spines are not venomous. Some moth caterpillars actually do have venomous spines, but the caterpillar of this species are totally harmless. Therefore they are also an excellent species for beginners. As long as you leave them, keep them clean, a little warm, well ventilated and they will grow pretty fast. Make sure not to overcrowd the caterpillars. They do need a lot of space for themselves. And replace their food every 2-4 to four days with fresh plant. Soon they will start to shed their skin for the third time, drastically changing their appearance into something new. This is what instar number 3 looks like. Are you impressed? I certainly am. I think that in this instar they look really impressive. Wow, now that's crazy if you ask me. Their horns remind me of the antlers of a deer in some way. If you've gotten them this far, it means you're making good progress. But we still have a long way to go. They aren't even a quarter of the size of their final form yet. In the third instar their spines become very pronounced and caterpillars are chocolate brown. At this stage they also develop subtle black stripes that run along their bodies. They also spend a lot of time hanging upside down in a typical, almost sphinx-like position. Beautiful, isn't it? It appears that we have made a lot of progress. But our babies are growing fast and it's almost time to move them to the next instar. 
What I really like about caterpillars is that when you raise them, each time they shed their skin, they will take to get a subtle, but definitely a new appearance. It's like the, the layers in a jawbreaker. Every time it changes. This is the end of Insta number four. What's really crazy is that I didn't check up on them for about five days. And in that time, not only did they shed their skins to Insta number four, but they had already almost completed it. Take a closer look and you will notice that they are almost shed ready to shed their skins to the final Insta. That's pretty crazy. The motto of this species is blink and you'll miss it. If I don't even film them for a short amount of time, I'll almost entirely miss one of their entire instars. Absolutely insane. So now we raised many caterpillars to, their, to this size, but the most crazy and radical change is about to happen right now. Oh my god, look at that. This is absolutely demonic. It's interesting how the instar number 5 is first brown and later green. It takes them a few days to produce the pigment, really. They definitely look very intimidating, despite the fact these caterpillars are completely harmless. But if I didn't know much about moths and saw one of these, I would probably get a heart attack. People who live in places where these moths are found in the wild are blessed to have such an awesome creature around them. They are utterly fascinating. Let me tell you a fun fact. Their horns will also color up slowly and will become bright orange, but it takes them a while to arrange this level of pigmentation. You will notice that later in the video, the caterpillars turn bright green. Breathtaking. Totally and utterly hardcore. These beasts can be found in the wild where it ranges from the southern Vermont and New Hampshire south to Florida and westwards to eastern portions of the Great Plains. Generally it's only found in the eastern half of the United States. They are however also found in Canada and maybe, but this is not very well researched, maybe even in the most northern part of Mexico, hugging the United States border. Reportedly caterpillars grow to about 14 centimeters in size, which is about 5.5 inches when fully grown. By length that makes them the longest caterpillars found in the United States and Mexico for sure. Their favorite food plants are hickories, pecan, butternut, black walnut, sweet gum, persimmon, sumac, cultivated cotton and others. Since they are very large, make sure to give them a lot of space and food. They can defoliate large branches of food plants in a very short time and thus are a demanding species to raise in captivity sometimes. Your hands will be full after taking care of such large demanding species. Keep them ventilated, a little bit humid but not wet and on the warmer side and most importantly clean. The horns do look very intimidating but yes this pieces is completely harmless, thankfully. After having gorged themselves, the caterpillars reach a maximum size. And when that happens, they will crawl to the floor and turn a turquoise blue shade. That means they are ready to pupate. This piece is pupates underground, so make sure to have them um, pupate in a substrate. I use humid moss, for example, but it's possible to use soil or shredded paper towels as well. When the caterpillars burrow underground, do not disturb them and put them away in a dark space for about two to three weeks before, so that they can pupate in peace. A few weeks later, open the containers and collect the pupa. The pupa of this species are quite big and black. They will hibernate until next spring. There you go, look at our healthy little babies that we raised together. Now the waiting game begins. Unfortunately, this species tends to have just one single generation a year. So that we have collected our pupa, it's time to store them away. I usually transfer the pupa to a container that has some vermiculite in it. This will keep them healthy until spring. Now the next thing to do is to store them away. Store the pupa cold outdoors in winter. To pass hibernation, they must experience several months of prolonged cold temperatures. Only then, when the pupa warm up in spring, it will trigger their development and their eventual emergence. Winter is very boring for a moth breeder since most of your species will tend to hibernate. 
That's why winter is a perfect time for me to travel the world or take a break from the hobby. In spring I warmed up the pupa and placed them indoors. And guess what? Several months later the moss came out. Wow, here it is. Let's examine this beauty in daylight. Wow, incredible. Aren't these amazing? Giant freaking regal moths. That's so crazy. Their red ring veins and grey patterns make them absolutely amazingly beautiful. Regal moths are huge, but sadly they only live for a small amount of time. They have no functional mouth, cannot feed and thus practically starve within a few weeks time. That means they are physically unable to eat. Which is why the moths generally starve and only live a short amount of time. The family of moths they come from, which are the Saturnidae, also known as emperor moths or silk moths, is a family of moths that do not feed as adults. Instead they live off a fat reserve that is stored in their abdomens. This fat reserve fuels them as they slowly met metabolize it and allows them to live for about two weeks before they completely run out of energy and more or less starve. During this time, males locate females based on the smell, their pheromone, and eventually mate with them. In order to achieve a pairing, you can put a cage in a dark, well-ventilated room and at night the insects will pair. This is what a pairing looks like the next morning. Males will have settled close to the female, sometimes hanging upside down, but sometimes also side by side. When you notice this has happened, you can anticipate the females to lay dozens of fertile eggs. The eggs are laid randomly in captivity, and if females are simply contained in a small pop-up cage, they will scatter them all over the cage walls. Now you can collect them. Now that's a good result, isn't it? Sadly though, the older the moths become, the more damage they sustain and the more they will shred their own wings over time. After a few days, they don't look very pristine anymore, but rather tattered. It's funny how I spent over a year taking care of caterpillars that are moths for less than two weeks. To breed moths, you need a lot of time and dedication. It's time to collect the eggs. By now they have laid hundreds of fertile eggs in their cage which I'm collecting right now. Just like in the beginning of this video, we are going to incubate them. And then soon, finally, the life cycle of this insect is going to be completed in its entirety, after a year of filming them. Two weeks later, the babies are hatching once again. I am so proud. It's finally happened. We completed the hickory horn devil life cycle. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you again soon. Bye bye. Do you like this video? Then please subscribe to my main YouTube channel named Bart Coppins. This is just my secret secondary channel on which I re-upload short summaries of long videos. Please search for Bart Coppins on YouTube and subscribe to my big channel to see more awesome things. It is much appreciated. Bye!